Welcome back, guys. We're with a former Attorney General, John Swallow. John Swallow has worked both in the private and public sector. First as a lawyer for a multinational company, and then as the Attorney General of the state of Utah. Even more powerfully, he defended himself against false charges and beat the government to clear his name. Welcome back, John. Thank you for being here. Hey, it's great to be here with you. Thanks. Well, we have a lot to talk about today, and this is really, I would say, a trending topic with the Johnny Depp, Amber Heard case. Everyone's kind of been glued to it, kind of like how back in the day with the O.J. Simpson case. Everyone has just been watching it and tuned in. But the big thing right now is that she's appealed to get a new jury. Um, let's just start from the beginning and just talk about what is the jury system, like how, just really everything about juries. Yeah. So... Obviously, the jury right is embedded in our constitutional amendments, mm -hmm. right? So the right for a person to present evidence or be judged yeah. by their community, by yeah. a regular neighbor or friend, maybe who doesn't know them, especially, yeah. particularly who doesn't know them, right? Yeah. An objective juror who's honest, has integrity, is mm -hmm. fundamental to our freedoms, to preserving our rights under the very document that protects us all. That's our constitution. And so um, if there is a question, uh, a matter of integrity that mm -hmm. impugns the process, yeah. then that can become a grounds for an appeal. And you got to keep in mind that a grounds for an appeal, the yeah. ability to file an appeal, and whether it's a, a merit-worthy appeal, yeah. there's a difference between the two. And so people, judges will decide, appellate judges will decide if yeah. there is um, a merit to the claim by Amber Heard that she deserves and the right for a, to a new trial because yeah. of a tainted juror. And, mm -hmm. and that's really the case there. But the, the right, fundamental right to a jury is, is so important to us. And I could go in yeah. and, and talk a lot about, you know, how that process really works. And, uh, well, but, but the importance is, mm -hmm. is that we're not reliant in this country upon a judge, a part of the system, someone who's yeah. paid a salary by the government yeah. to judge an individual citizen. That citizen has the right to say, no, no, I want, I want people out there in the community yeah. who may kind of relate more mm -hmm. to me as a person, as a human being, as a person with a family or with a job or who's trying to make his or her way through the American system, the American dream, yeah. own property. I want someone like me, mm -hmm. like you, to judge me, not some judge in a black robe who's paid a salary by the government. Yeah. That's the right to a jury. And that's why it's so powerful. I and the, the idea is if, if, if my neighbors hearing mm -hmm. all the evidence think I've done something wrong, criminal, or think I deserve this result or don't deserve this re result, I can live with that. Yeah. And, and everybody else in our society can live with that because yeah. they've got to put themselves as if they were in the jury box themselves. And so that's mm -hmm. why jury verdicts are so trusted because every American can say that is a microcosm of me. Mm. And if I were in that box, I would have done it the same way. Yeah. And that's how important the jury system is to the American people. No, I, I love that. And to just piggyback off that, how does like a lawyer on both ends, how do they pick these jurors? Cause I know everyone's probably gotten a letter in the mail saying, oh, you've been selected for jury, but how do they actually sit on the stand and they're in the room? Right, so you really hit on something important and that is because we believe fundamentally that jurors mm -hmm. should be objective and mm -hmm. fair-minded, right? Why does it matter who mm -hmm. sits in the jury box? Yeah. Right, because it's an untainted system. But the truth is, mm -hmm. Every, every one of us comes to the table with our inherent biases and our beliefs yeah. and our prejudices. I mean, you go to a restaurant and they have more than one item on the, one, more than one item on the menu. Why is that? Because oh, yeah. we have different tastes, yeah. right? different things that we like. And so same with the jury. So every lawyer who goes mm -hmm. into a jury trial, and I know yeah. this, I've been involved in jury trials. Yeah. We, we know that every person who's a potential juror Mm -hmm. has predispositions. Yeah. So we want to have someone who's as aligned with our client's interest, whether I'm the state, if I'm the attorney general yeah. or I'm a prosecutor, right? I want the state's interest, right? Yeah. Or if I'm a defend if I'm representing a defendant and I'm yeah. a lawyer, I want a jury that is aligned philosophically 
yeah. with my client, or at least not biased against who my client happens to be. Okay. Right? So it sounds like you're going in and trying to stack the, gan <laughs> the deck for you, not against you. Well, we live in an adversarial system, yeah. right? And if you don't understand that, that the prosecution is trying to convict, even though under their ethical constraints, they're not supposed to be trying to convict. They're trying yeah. to find what? Justice, Just, yeah. right? But unfortunately, being the people we are, competitive individuals who like to win, yeah. right? Every one of us likes to win. No one goes and yeah. plays a game and says, oh, I want to lose this one, right? <laughs> yeah. We are predetermined, almost predestined, to do everything we can to win. Mm -hmm. So on the prosecution side, they want to find jurors mm -hmm. who are inclined to convict. Yeah. And that's not how it should be, but that's a corruption in our system. Yeah. On the other hand, to offset that or counterbalance that, you've got to have defense attorneys who are mm. just as inclined to find jurors who are likely to acquit, mm. right? Who are at best, at worst, not biased against their client and at best yeah. pro whatever cir circumstance and, 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 and in tune or sensitive to whatever it is they want the jury yeah. to feel about the defendant, right? Yeah. So there is a very big industry out there yeah. on can I call it gaming the system? Yeah. Okay. On gaming the system. And, and you're nuts if you don't tr try to at least find people who are inclined to support your client. That's the kindest yeah. way I can say it. Well, and that sounds like a lot for one lawyer to do. Um, I've heard that there's jury consultants that you could go out there and obviously might cost you a few bucks, but right. you could go out there and they're going to help you figure out who's best. Right, right, right. And, and there are, and there, and there are, and they can be well paid and yeah. they can be very valuable. And we've, okay. we've all seen the runaway jury. Yeah. Right? Okay. And other legal shows like that, where a jury, you know, is very carefully selected by big tobacco yeah. or by the um, second amendment people mm -hmm. or, you know, in any other kind of very powerful group, probably the environmental lobby, mm -hmm. those kinds of things, because yeah. so much rides on a verdict in yeah in a case like that but <laughs> there is no case for any individual more important than a case about your own personal you know criminality yes. right your own conviction and so and so it's really can it really can be used effectively in jury trials and i was involved in a jury trial where where it would be very very important to the defendant mm -hmm. to find the jury that would mm -hmm. at least give him yeah. or her I don't want to disclose that. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, of course. A fair shot at a, at a verdict, you know? And so, yes, and so there are lots of tools that jury consultants or attorneys use as they go through that process yeah. to try to understand who it is they're inviting in to be a juror yeah. over their client. So right? is a jury consultant, are they going through your social media? <laughs> are they like borderline stalking you, like trying to figure out, oh, does this person smoke? Does this person not smoke? Does her grandma the, smoke? The, the good ones, yeah. the good ones do. They, they go to every uh, public piece of information and they try to purchase voter records. Oh, wow. Social media sites, they look mm. at those. They try to get a feel for who it is that is potentially going to be impaneled on that jury. Mm -hmm. And they can even rank them or list them in numbers of priorities. They can flag the ones they definitely don't want because yeah. in, in almost every process you have what are called preemptory challenges where mm -hmm. your, your team, your legal team can strike a juror for no reason without cause really? up to a certain number of, of, okay. of, of exemptions, right? So you can actually eliminate the real, the, the people you've predetermined would not be good for your client, the defendant or mm -hmm. the prosecution. Um, and no questions asked, that really? person is stricken from consideration as a juror. But you only have a, a limited number of those. Okay. In some cases it's eight, some cases it's 10 or 12, mm -hmm. some cases it's four. Sometimes that can be up to the negotiation between the prosecution and the defense or the parties. Sometimes Some judges are very strict on that. There may even be state or um, ordinance um, restrictions on that, depending on if you're a county court or a state court. So it just really kind of depends but you've got to know going in how many yeah. you have, yeah. and then you've got to do your research. And then you've got, if you're going to be doing a jury type process to kind of screen jurors, potential jurors, yeah. then you have to go through and, and do your homework mm -hmm. so that you really know who is a potential yeah. biased 
Jura. I'm going to say it that way because that's the yeah. cleanest way to say it because we don't, we don't want to really say do yeah. we, that we're trying to find people that would get a guilty person off. Yeah. But certainly, you know, in this win at all cost mentality, there are those who would, right? Yeah. But we at least want to say, I don't want a juror who would be predisposed against my client because of his or her race, religion, yeah. socioeconomic status, you know, accent, yeah. um, any other type of, of concern that you may have about your client. You don't yeah. want to have that juror biased against that person or an informational bias. You know, if, yeah. if you, for example, you've got a, a potential juror in your jury pool mm. who has been like posting on Facebook about what an awful person your client is. Yeah. You're going to want to know that. Yeah. And you're going to want to bring that up to the court. And the court on its own would likely strike that person. You wouldn't need to use one of your preemptory challenges to get that person removed because that person is mm -hmm. obviously too informed, too biased, or too misinformed to be a fair juror. Yeah. So you want to do your, you want to do your homework. Yeah. And there's a big industry out there doing that kind of homework and research that is expensive. Yeah. But in the right circumstance, it's worth it. Yeah. And to bring up something that's happening right now, um, Again, the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial, that is something on people's minds. Right. One of her claims was, is that the jurors were getting on social media and their, um, their con when they called, when they said that she was guilty, she said social media affected that and that they shouldn't even be allowed to go on social media right. during that time. And I, I don't know exactly what the rules are for juries like that, but all I know is my grandma keeps on tell, talking to me about it. Right, and typically a juror yeah. should not be discussing the case really with any other juror oh, during not the even pendency of the trial, or with their family members, mm -hmm. or watching the news media, mm -hmm. TV, radio, newspapers. Sometimes it becomes so important that a judge will sequester, it's called sequestering a jury, where they put them up in a hotel room and they basically lock them down during oh, the wow. pendency of a trial because it becomes so important. But rules vary by jurisdiction. Yeah. And rules vary by the request of the attorneys in the case. And so, you know, in, in fact, it can get so bad that there, there are motions for changes of venue where, where um, a party will feel like there's been so much media yeah. in a certain geographic region that the person simply can't get a fair trial in that jurisdiction. It's rare when mm -hmm. those motions to change venue are granted, yeah. but they have been granted. And they're granted because at the end of the day, the mm -hmm. state or the government mm -hmm. or you know, the judge, they want a fair process in the jury trial. Because yeah. again, if we don't have a fair process, we don't have a fair judicial system. Yeah. Right? Everybody counts on fair. And so it's not always fair, yeah. but generally courts will try to make sure that things are fair and good counsel... Mm -hmm. will fight to make sure that it's a fair process for their clients. And if not, they'll appeal or they'll file motions to um, mm -hmm. dismiss the case, the charges, file motions yeah. for, you know, um, for, uh, hung, you know, if there's a hung jury or yeah. they'll, file, they'll file actually motions to, um, you know, for a mistrial. It's called a mistrial, yeah. basically. And, and, and judges sometimes will grant those, although it happens very rarely because yeah. judges invest a lot of time I know a trial went four weeks, and judges judges are very reluctant to start yeah. over after a four week trial. Well, there's a lot to unpack there, so yeah. let me just start off. Do you? We talked about uh, change of venue. Do you have any examples of that that you know of? And it's all right if you don't. But do you have anything off the top of your mind where back in 19 whatever they had to move this trial to a different county because the jury was just not having it and it wasn't fair. Well, I can't think of one right off the top of my head, but yeah. I will say this, um, in cases that are blatantly uh, um, violative, so for example, a murder victim of a, of a let's just say um, a Hispanic girl mm -hmm. in, in an all white community, yeah. right? Where maybe um, the prosecution may feel that there won't be enough sympathy mm. in that, jurisdiction yeah they want to they want to get into, into an area where where the jury pool will more likely reflect the um, the status yeah the economic status the racial 
um, profile of mm. one of the parties in the case. And so they'll make a motion to move a case over to a different county where, where the jury pool would be more reflective yeah. of their client. It can happen on all sides of a, of a case. Um, you know, in, in the Deep South, there were yeah. convictions that have since been overturned under, oh, wow. under um, you know, factual innocence bases, mm -hmm. which are, are coming more and more to light, yeah. where, where a black defendant was convicted of murder, placed yeah. on death row, and, not, and actually later found to be factually innocent, where, it was, where the conviction was placed on a predominantly white jury pool okay. that, uh, in, a, in a particularly egregious case where yeah. the community was outraged and they had to find of uh, you know, mm -hmm. a, a, a someone who committed the crime, right? Yeah. And they, they, they found a convenient person and convicted that person. And so for those reasons, mm -hmm. you will see an abundance in, in very serious crimes, very explosive mm -hmm. media-driven type allegations yeah. where someone will make a, a motion. And that's really up to the discretion of the judge to, yeah. to grant that or not grant that. And that can become a grounds for an appeal as well later on if there is a conviction. And then you also spoke about a hung jury. Could you unpack that a bit? Because yeah. okay. what a hung jury means is in, in many jurisdictions, you, you require a unanimous verdict yeah. in order to convict or to acquit. Mm -hmm. So some people happen to mistakenly believe that if you have one holdout juror, mm -hmm. that means that the defendant can no longer be tried again. Oh, okay. That's not the case in many jurisdictions. You need a unanimous verdict for guilty mm -hmm. or for an acquittal. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you get one juror who will, or, or five jurors out of mm -hmm. eight or 12, um, it, it doesn't go along with the, everyone else, then yeah. that becomes a hung jury. And what that means is th then the prosecution, usually mm -hmm. in a criminal case, will have the option to retry that person with a brand new trial and with a brand new jury. Start all over again. Start all over again, right? If there's wow. a hung jury. Um, it, and that means if there's not a unanimous verdict. Okay. okay, so it's not like 12 angry men where you just have that one chair carry everyone to the well, end. Of no, the well, in that case, yeah. he was able to pull everyone back. Okay. So there was, there was his ability to get a complete mm -hmm. unanimous. Oh, okay, so it's about reaching. I think yeah. it was acquittal in that. Yeah. So it's been a while. Yeah, so, but, but that, again, but, but we're talking about hung jury. We're talking about yeah. where the jury comes back to the judge after several attempts and says, we cannot get everyone on the same page okay. on any of the charges. It's called a hung jury. Okay. Now, sometimes there are multiple counts and you'll get a jury that will say guilty, 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 and then they can't decide on other counts. And so in that oh, case, okay. the, the defendant is pronounced guilty on the charges that are unanimous. Yeah. And the other charges are, um, are, they can't reach a resolution. And so they can try that person on those other charges again, because it's been a, it's been a hung Okay, jury. so you could be a hung jury just on separate charges. Right. Okay. Well, another jury thing that's coming up is the jury alternate system. Mm -hmm. And it just seems like they kick out four, uh, just four random people. But right. can you tell me a little bit more about the jury alternate system, how that came about? Right. In, in a lot of cases, particularly the most in, you know, serious cases, yeah. um, when you're investing in a three-week trial or four-week trial, yeah. You want to have some extra alternate jurors mm -hmm. in case something happens to one of the primary jurors. Okay. Okay. And so in, in many cases that no one on the jury panel is going to know if they're an alternate jury juror oh, wow. or okay. they're, they're one of the primary mm -hmm. jurors. Because if you're an alternate jury, you're thinking, well, I don't really have to pay attention because mm -hmm. I'm not likely to be picked at the end, yeah. right? So um, if, if a jury, juror is disqualified for misconduct, mm -hmm. becomes ill and can't continue on with the trial, with, with the alternate jury system, you can continue through to the end of the trial and still have confidence that you're going to have enough bodies at the yeah. end of the trial to consider charges and render a verdict. And so that's the alternate jury system. Okay. Well, and... I know we're kind of wrapping up on time, sure. but when it comes down to juries, we've talked about like biases, like racial biases. Right. We've talked about like economic biases. Philosophical bias, yeah. um, you know, racial bias, mm -hmm. economic bias, gender bias, religion bias. Those yeah. are the things 
that can contaminate a jury. Those are the things that you want to avoid yeah. if all, all possible if you're defending someone or prosecuting someone because you want a clean verdict. Yeah. You, you want to win. I mean, of at course. the end of the day, let's be honest. But at the end of the day, you, you can all you can really insist on and demand on is a clean process, an objective process that's likely to let all the evidence play out mm -hmm. and let the cards roll where they may or the dice roll where they may. Mm -hmm. and, and, and all you can ask in our system in America is a clean shot yeah. with clean evidence and a clean, unbiased jury pool so you have the best chance of the truth mm -hmm. coming out. Because we're seeking at the end of the day, as a system, as a yeah. society, we're seeking truth. Although a defendant is always seeking an acquittal and yeah. the prosecution more and more seems to be seeking a conviction rather than the truth. And so yeah. you want a clean system. Okay. Well, I think that just about wraps us up. Thank you so much, John. And we really appreciate all the knowledge that you've given us and all of the experience as a former attorney general. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure to be here. Happy to come back anytime. Thank you so much for being with us here today. And we'll see you next week with former attorney general, John Swallow.